Buenos días, mi gente. Welcome to La Primera Vez. I'm your host, Christina Reed, and this is the digital talk show where you get to find out about your favorite Latinx celebrities. Today, we are joined by Julio Macias. So welcome, Julio. Thank you so Hola. much for coming. We are the biggest fans of you over here at Latina. Um, you've had like the best breakout of the last few years. So we're just, cool. we're, we're obsessed. We can't wait to see what you will do next. Um, we The premise of this show is really to get to know you um, and understand those first cultural milestones, those big defining moments that help shape who you are today and you know put you on this career path. So we're gonna take you back to the beginning. Can you tell us about where you grew up, what that was like, what you loved about it? We want to hear it all. Yeah, so I, I was born in Mexico City um, and I, I, I lived there for most of my life. I grew up um, there with my mom and my dad and my sister and around eight, nine years old. Uh, so, you know, mid nineties, um, they, it started getting complicated in Mexico City, and for safety reasons, my, my my dad was really adamant that we moved to the United States. My mom was like, "Mis hijos nacieron en México y van a morir en México." You know, she's just like, you know, very patriotic that way. Um, but you know, she said, you know, for 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 the safety of my kids, um, she she always had this this interesting thing. You know, everyone moves to the United States for a better life. And she always had this romanticized idea of like, why can't we stay in our own countries and make them better? Um, and it's interesting, you know, right now on on the fourth season of All My Block, we're talking about code switching and where does that come from? And um, I, I, because I moved from, from Mexico to Los Angeles, my family eventually moved to Miami and I moved back to Los Angeles, spent some time in New York City. I. You know, if I'm speaking in Spanish, if I'm talking to someone from Yucatan, it's different than if I'm talking to someone from Mexico City. It's different if I'm talking to someone from TJ, and it's seen and it feels the same in English. So, it's weird that I have all of these authentic voices, but they are distinct and different with their own accents and flavors. Growing up, I was super on the way that I spoke because the way that I spoke at home was completely different from how anybody at school is talking. So it's kind of like you get into the survival mode where before you even get a chance to even be picked on, you're like, I'm not even gonna let you guys get the chance. Like, no way. Yeah, I wasn't like ashamed of being Mexican. I, I, I love mariachi music, but it was always like this secondary thing where I wanted to prove to other people that before, any, before being Mexican, I'm a person and this and that. And, and that became so prevalent that um, over the years it did become a little bit of like um, hiding it a little bit more than than I would or I do now. Um, before it was like, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to get stuck stereotype playing all of these like either gangbangers or like Mexicans or this or that. Yo, out the gate, these two roles, I, I am, I'm, I'm a much better person for embracing these, these roles, you know? At what point in this growing up phase did you realize that entertainment was something that you wanted to focus on? Um, so I grew up around voice actors, um, you know, going into these booths and, and watching um, uh, Mexican voice actors give new life to shows that were already prolific, you know, Friends and, and um, you know, Will and Grace and then movies like, um, I think they did Armageddon and I had an idea that you could be a working artist. It was never this like people make money off of that. No, I knew that people make money off of that. Um, and I always liked to entertain and this and that, la la la. Uh, but it wasn't until high school when I really, I was like, what are you gonna do? Like, you know, you, you, you're you a good student, you wanted to be a zoologist, but then you kind of like really <laughs> would have had to like really focus in on that in like middle school and be like, I'm gonna do that, right? Uh, so it was like two options, either like go into the family business, which, you know, fantastic, or, you know, try this little passion. I was like, well, I know that you can do it, so let's let's give it a shot. Let's why not, you know? So eventually, my my business partner he just like pushed me to, to to audition more, and he's like, "Yeah, you're gonna start off doing crap and you know little commercials here or there, but you're gonna you know earn your bearings. You're gonna you're gonna be better, you know. You're gonna." So I started doing that and commercial here. What was there. the first What was the first gig that you got? Do you remember? 
first gig I booked was a Kira Sarah commercial oh for goodness. a cell phone company. Yeah, and I was a rustler. And um, I'm really bad at playing um, sexy. <laughs> like, it's just, it's, it, it, people have this swagger with them, right? I, you know, if people find uh, Oscar or Spooky attractive, um, it might be the way that the the cap the, the camera's capturing, but that's not my personal intention of what I'm like going for, right? I'm gonna stop you right there. I just I can envision the comments right now. They're gonna say if people are they're they're gonna revolt in the comments. They're not gonna agree with you on that one for sure. Yeah. Hey, thank you by the way for keep you know keep watching. But, but uh, <laughs> that director, if you can find him, will attest to that because he was just like Julio, just like you know, just do your thing, and I was like, cool. Guido said, and they're like, no, come on, like, do your thing. Like, we got through the shoot, but I remember the director being very disappointed by my casting. And and then from there, I started booking a lot in Spanish. Um, yeah, because then I, that was something else that I did. I was like, oh, I don't want to audition anything in Spanish, just because like, I, I speak pretty fluent Spanish, and and I would and I would I know that if I started doing that, I would start booking more. When people are like, dude, why why wouldn't you want to book again? Because I didn't want to be like put in that little box you know it's like oh he speaks spanish great let's just cast him in all the commercials and give him no other opportunity right uh but you know i went in for it i you know i, I decided and again it was um practice i call my mom almost every single day and being like yo thank you for for pushing me to continue to speak spanish as often and as fluently as you like forced me and my sister to do it Yep. You know, because now I'm, I'm very, I'm very grateful of for, for the Spanish that I have. And when I talk to other friends who, who are bilingual, they're like, Julio, your, your Spanish is so pretty. And I'm like, it's my mom. Talk to my mom. <laughs> we, we owe it all to our moms. I mean, there was a time where growing up, I was like, you can, you can pay me to speak Spanish. I was like, I, I, for, I, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. And now I'm like, <laughs> I need to read. I need to listen to everything to make sure I'm sticking with it or else. Mm -hmm. Who knows what will come of me? <laughs> nobody, nobody. And, you know, and I and I started reading books for that exact reason. You know, like I I wanted to expand my vocabulary in Spanish the same way that I have it in English. And it, when I would listen to podcasts or music or this or that, it's all great, but it's very colloquial. You know, and so you're just picking up like little phrases here and there. When you sit down and read something, you're like. You know, you gotta put you gotta put some effort into that. I'm sure, and I, I know Mexican slang is so distinct. I'm I'm Dominican, so just the way that Dominican yeah. speak is so freaking just out there. I'm like half the times, like when I was in Mexico, like a few years back, I'm like, first of all, they knew already that I was Dominican just from the way that I was speaking, but there was like a little bit of a language barrier there too because you know there's there are so many like colloquialisms and different <laughs> things that just don't necessarily cr you know cross and mesh yeah yeah uh jason is dominican uh he plays ruby on on on, on my block and yeah we'll be having full conversations in spanish and like sprinkled with que que <laughs> que oh that's that's what that means it's uh the other the other day he was like um i said yahweh and he's like, what's what's Yahweh? What's Yahweh? And I said, way is like, uh, like dude. And he's like, what's what's yeah? And I'm like, just yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, like yeah. And I was like, Yahweh, yes, or that's it, dude. And I was like, he thought it was like uh, me saying Yahweh, like God. Like no, no, no. <laughs> the Dominican translation of that would be like, Oye loco. That would be like, that would be that. Yeah. You gotta yeah. say it to him in his terms, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> we're gonna get nowhere. I'm learning que lo que. Que lo que, tato, que lo que. Plátano, that's, those are really the only words you need to know if you're Dominican. Uh, uh, instead of, que estás haciendo, es que tu haces. Right. Just, we, you know. <laughs> shortcuts with it. We, you know, we're, we, we want to say the words as quickly as possible. If that means removing the letter S from the vocabulary, then so be no it. No problem. <laughs> yeah, and Mexican, from Mexico City specifically, is so dense with like, super fast and you want to use as many words as you can in the sentence you know so it's like uh. <laughs> <laughs> you got me <laughs> but, yeah. i mean this is just going off of the topic of dubbing and we're talking about languages you talked about your dad you talked about your grandfather um but aside from them who are those inspirational figures who you look to to kind of guide you on this path it never crossed my mind that i couldn't do it 
However, now that I'm in it and the amount of people that come up to me and say, I, I, I'm going to try this because of you, like, you know, I, I see myself represented in this character or this thing that you do this now being that representation for people, it shows how important it is but also how little of that I had growing up, even though it didn't affect me and it never like necessarily pushed me personally for forward to like, no, we need to have more. It was just like, oh, there's nobody there. I guess I could do it. <laughs> uh, we hear a lot of things about like, oh, this set is so diverse. And then you show up on set and everyone on set is Latino. It is diverse, but it's also not, you know, it's, it's suddenly now its own little click. You know, it's not inclusive. It's just now it's a bunch of Latinos, which is great. And let's keep doing that because that's what we need. But can we have a show where it is truly multicultural and multicolored? Uh, you know, um, can we can we write something where where the the main character can be white and it's and it doesn't feel off balance because everything else, you know, is 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 real and it works. You know, and and then show us your writers' rooms while you're at it, and show us your yes. days and crafty. Yes. We we want to see it all. We don't want it to just be, you know, diverse in in one sector where it's you no. know public facing and not in any anywhere else because because it shows. Yeah, um, and then transitioning to you know we kind of touched on this, but. I would love to hear about your transformation into your characters, into Spooky and into Pete. There are big transformations. Hair is different. The way you look is different. The way you speak is different. Are there any, in, in those transformations, are there any ways that you're able to infuse a little bit of who you are in that? Or is it a complete like? A lot of actors work in, out, you know, their emotions. And then however that represents outside, that's fine. I like the show of it. So I like, I put on the clothes, I throw on the accent, even though that at first it sounds fake, I work it till it sounds real, till it's real to me. So, so like uh, Oscar, you know, when they said spooky, I never considered myself a, an intimidating person. So I'm tall um, and uh, I've been in a couple of fights where people just like, didn't want to fight me because of my reach or my you know so i was like okay let me let me work out let me get as big as i could you know from from that time. so putting on that weight helped me feel spooky i don't improvise at all with spooky i don't i don't i don't add a single comma i try to make it as word perfect um because i don't want to say anything stupid or dumb and you know i think we put a lot of love and, and effort into, into into crafting not only the show but also that character but for me, I, you know, I, I wanted to be as as authentic to these communities and do a job that no one would be like, oh, he's just pretending to be hard at this. Like bringing more humanity into it in the sense of like, I, I can identify with that. I can identify with that struggle. And for Pete, um, Pete, I was able to be a little bit more me, um, you know, uh, God, uh, the first line of the show where I walk up to Selena and I'm like, ladies, 20 takes, easy. Um, God, I, it made me cringe. <laughs> but but so, so like that part is in me, but like keeping the energy going and like, you know, dancing and moving and being the sarcastic hype man for, that's something I'm comfortable with, right? So for, for when I read these scripts, I'm like, all right, Pete's there to keep the party going, to support Selena and to like make some beautiful duets with her, right? Let's get let's get it. Let's do this. It's gonna be easy breezy. I show up on set, like I can sing, I could do this. I'm two feet taller than the actual Pete. Like, great, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Um and they're like, oh, Pete's actually a phenomenal dancer. I was like, so am I. No. They oh. they put on the music, they're like, I think you need classes. <laughs> Wow. To go yeah. and saying I'm a good dancer and then they tell you you need classes, that's, yeah. there's nothing that'll quite humble you like that. Yeah. So I was like, cool. But, um, you know, it was, it, it gave me, it, it gave me homework. I, I'm one of those people that likes to work. And so when things come easy, I'm like, my head's on a swivel because I'm like, something's about to happen because that was too easy. Like I, you know, so having to be drilling cumbia steps, you know, like, in the bathroom, in the shop, in, in in line for shopping, you know, and then when COVID hit, like just in my house, just cumbia, 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 so that when I got up there, you know, Christian, 
she just moves around the stage flawlessly with no effort. And so I'm just trying to like keep up with her, you know, um, that was fun. So like, I didn't do much quote unquote, like acting prep or anything like that for, 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 uh, Pete, but all of the dancing really kept me grounded and connected to the band. That's amazing. And now, you know, wherever you need to go, you can just bust out those moves. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You got this. You, you yeah, where's that wedding at? Let's go. Let's go, everybody. He's got some moves, please. I know how to cumbia now. Are you kidding me? Cumbia, cumbia, cumbia. Just like that. Well, I mean, it's refreshing to hear that you're always just looking for knowledge, wanting to teach yourself, and, you know, in turn, teaching others. So as you take on these future projects, you know, whether they're personal projects or, you know, new acting gigs, what do you want your fans to get out of those, you know, future projects, whether you know what they are or not? Proud. Uh, unapologetically proud of seeing uh, another, uh, someone that they that I identify with. And he's like, oh, I can, I can like mariachi music and skateboarding and you know uh whatever it is like i i don't have to fall into the little box that 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 my friends are telling me or even that my primos on the other side are telling me that yeah. i gotta be you know we're not um, a monolith we were allowed to like and do different things so yeah 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 if you remind somebody about I, that then that's amazing yeah, I, I, I'm working on a on you know I, I play music, but that's just really, really for me. And I started playing this song that sounded like an Irish drinking song, and then the chorus ended up being "Extranjero en dos países, ni de aquí ni de allá," you know. And I and I was like, and I was, and and it was sad. And like I, I, I translated it to my wife, and she's like, "Oh my God, that's so sad. Are you okay? Do you need to talk to somebody?" And I was like, no, but it, like the way that I'm singing it, the way that I'm, it's like, I'm owning it. You're like, you know what? You're right. I'm not from here and I'm not from there. I'm somewhere in between. And that's just who I am, you know? Right. And and that's, that's something that everybody can relate to. That's something that we started our conversation talking about being away from home, but feeling like you're home, being that stranger to two different groups. It's, it's something that we all know and can relate to. So the way you captured it poetically, we love that. <laughs> So. Well, we're about to wrap up and I like to end on this one question because I love hearing everybody's individual takes on this, um, especially knowing that you have this big, beautiful career ahead of you, but so far. Yo, from your lips to wherever. Please, manifesting this. <laughs> we know it, we see it. But just, you know, from so far, have you had any full circle moments that have made this this career in entertainment, this path completely worth it. It could be something small, it could be something big, but just any full circle moments that made you think, yeah, this is where I'm meant to be and I'm, I'm doing it. For me, it's, it's arriving on set. Those are the moments where I, it feels interesting, you know, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I drive onto um, the, say, Warner lot or the Paramount lot or where we were filming uh, Selena, which was uh, Rose in Rosarito where they shot Titanic. Uh, growing up in LA, my favorite place to go to was Universal Studios uh, and not for any of the rides. I loved the back tour, like the, the back lot tour. Um, it was like, I, I could just go on that over and over and over again. Leave me there, mom. Like, <laughs> like you'll, you'll find me here at five o'clock. For me, when, when I, when I, go on set for something that I'm working on and I'm driving behind the sets between the stages, the gutters between the stages and I'm walking through and I'm like, yo, I'm here to work. Like, I'm not just a bystander, I'm here to work. And I know like, it's not the lights, it's not the camera, it's not the adoration, it's the fact that I'm on set and like, I'm, I'm here to work. Like, this is this is where I go, this is my job, you know? Um, and it, it never, it never really, feels like that even though i treat it as such i, I treat it as hard work we're, we're universal if you're watching this we need to get julio on one of the trams one day we need to look, give him a, a shot just to just to operate yeah. and do his hey nbc style. if you want to do like a like a little thing where i'm the tour guide like let's go okay i'm i'm with you on that i will start that petition as long as i get to be on one of the seats just cool. <laughs> That is, that's something I can start a petition for, for sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Julio, for being amazing, sharing all of these gems with us. And we're so excited to see the latest season of On My Block. We're excited to see everything else that you're working on. Uh, please let us know where the fans can follow you and anything that we should be aware of coming up. You can follow me at uh, A Julio Macias on both Twitter and Instagram. And um, season four on my block filming right now. We are, you know, in deep in it right now. And uh, Selena season two comes out this upcoming month, I believe. <laughs> Amazing. We're so excited to see it. Thank you so much for being a part of La Primera Vez. We're just... We're the biggest fans. Thanks. All right, thank you guys. Ciao.